Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nickam The feature presentation is what is the right time to retire from your medical regular profession Remember I said regular profession and this is uh, exceedingly important especially if you are a interventionalist like a surgeon <clears throat> a cardiac surgeon an orthopedic surgeon or if you have been working in the cardiac catheterization lab and uh, you are approaching age between 55 and 60 what do you need to do you know what is the right time to retire and why you should retire from your regular high stress job and look for alternatives and i'm going to talk to you about uh, some of the options available to transition from a high stress job to a lower stress job but still continue to use your medical skills and knowledge for many many years to come first of all we have to understand as we get older we lose our cognitive ability we may think good but our hands our muscle coordination our eye coordinations are not up to par as we think it is and when other people are telling we going to reject it but the reality is uh, they are right our ability to have the dexterity that we had when we were in the 30s and 40s we no longer have that and look at this one study showed that uh, there's a 20% decline in the cognitive ability 20% decline in the cognitive ability of physicians between 40 and 70 so this cognitive decline begins way long before you are ready to retire and by the time you reach 75 you know you do have significant uh, cognitive impairment which may hamper your ability to perform like a, an aggressive surgeon or interventionalist and incidentally in the same study they found that 57% of the adverse medical effects were noted among people who had this uh, cognitive impairment so one on you have a cognitive impairment and that can lead to adverse outcomes and that can lead to bad report on your uh, performance and which is why we think it's time for us to look at transitioning ourselves from a high stress <coughs> from a high stress job to a lesser intensive job i have to tell you i started my practice in 1980 as a cardiologist i practiced for almost 40 years as a interventional cardiologist here at the houston texas medical center and i'm going to walk you through as what i have done and what are the other alternatives available if you want to transition from a high stress job to a lower stress job but still mentally and emotionally fulfilling okay here are some of the obstacles we have as we get past age 60 i mean this is a reality we just have to accept it and try to find alternatives to keep our mind and soul in in a productive manner more than 80 70 to 80% of the people are in a corporate medicine where the administrators control your function as uh, a doctor or as a nurse they prefer to have young productive doctors whom they can mold as they say and tell them what to do they are driven by numbers metrics less so by your decades of experience and communication skills with the patients all those things come way down in the list but for the corporate it's a bottom line revenue and productivity and that's where we we are going to fall short because of our cognitive inability and physical ailments but you have to remember that when we are talking about retirement or stress job we are not retiring from our even our profession you know and we are certainly not retiring from our life so don't get me wrong you know retirement doesn't mean that you shut off everything and go into a closet and spend the rest of the time isolation in isolation but by the time you are 60 if you are ready to transition into a lesser stress job 
you may still have five to 15 years of productive life where you can continue to practice in your own field and contribute to the community at the same time get a pretty good reasonable reward. Well, if you are in a group practice, don't bet on it because the young partner whom you brought in to help you with your practice may be most anxious to push you off the cliff so that he can control the whole business. I know that's a very nasty way to put it, but that's a reality. So you might want to be cognizant of the fact, but well, that's where your cognitive memory comes into play, that things change. When the new water comes, the old water is going to be washed away from the shores. That's natural phenomenon. You cannot avoid it. Here is uh, one example. This is my example. Uh, in 2017, when I, my practice was slowing down, it was getting to a point where I was not going to be able to do interventional cardiology. I was not going to be able to sustain my private practice with 60-70% overhead. So I had to look for a transition. And my transition was to go from a 40-year private practice into a VA full-time job. There are pros and cons of working for anybody whether it's VA hospital, corporate medicine, or a clinic, whatever it is. But this was a whole new le learning experience for me to work for somebody and answer to them every morning as to what I'm doing, where I'm going, wh why I'm, I haven't done certain things, and why their nurses are complaining. I mean, you're going to get the whole baggage. But let's leave that aside. You can look for a, a VA job which is less stressful and still could be in your own field. And there are several advantages to looking at a VA job, which I'm gonna talk upon in a minute. And as I said, I did it. If you transition to a lesser stressful job like a VA job or any government job, then if you work for five to six years, uh, one, you get a reasonably good pay. Number two, you get retirement benefits. Number three, you get health insurance. And if you maintain health insurance for five years at the VA hospital, then you will have the same health insurance which you can continue for a lifetime. If not for anything else, you need to find a government job for one, the reasonable salary, less stressful situation, health insurance, and retirement benefit where you can put uh, almost $24,000 in 2021 towards your retirement. And if you work for five years or more, you are also eligible for a small pension. How about that? If you're working in a hospital setup, you're interacting with the same doctors, nurses, and residents, and fellows, and all these things, and you are producing, you're busy mentally, physically, emotionally, you are connected, and what more can you ask? You're getting a good pay, retirement, pension, and uh, you're working in your own field with less stress. But it takes at least one to two years to find a decent VA job that you like. So I would say if you are planning to retire at age 60 or 65, I would say look for two years before you are time to retire. So that will give you a little option to select which place you want to work for. And that will be a great benefit. And if you don't plan, you may be caught off guard and then you may be in a rush to find something that may not be suitable to you. Okay, transition two. In your own area around, they don't want you as a surgeon, they don't want you as an interventional cardiologist, but you can work as a medical director in, in the same area, in the same clinic or somewhere else. And working as a medical director, you can use your years of experience and wisdom, which may come in handy and may serve a better purpose than you trying to force yourself into an operating room at uh, two o'clock in the morning and standing there for six hours trying to do a surgery on a patient whose heart function is just barely hanging. You see, you get the message. All right, so number three, 
you can join a part-time job. So say you don't want to work full-time, you don't want to be going 8 o'clock in the morning every day, coming home at 6 o'clock, you don't want that, you just want to work three days a week, something like that. Yes, there are plenty of clinics all around town and they could be in your own field. You know, if you're a surgeon, you could be doing pre-op and post-op follow-ups on these patients. If you're a cardiologist, you can work in a cardiology clinic part-time reading EKGs, reading echocardiograms, or, or seeing patients for follow-up, things like that. So look for a part-time job. And again, all of these things take time. It may take a year or two to find a reasonably good place for you to start your second leg of your journey in the profession. Or if you want to be aggressive, you can just open up your stock market like a website and start learning about stocks and bonds and, and then start investing. And some people invest in aggressive stocks and bonds. So some people invest in dividend paying stocks, which are kind of less stressful, slow pace, but still you were getting monthly dividends. So it will supplement your income. So these are some of the simple, uh, these are some of the plans that you can think about there could be hundreds of different plans but if you want to transition from your high stress high intensity interventional position to a lesser stress you look for areas which i talked about and be prepared to spend a couple of years to find the right thing because uh, as i said we may be retiring from a high stress job but we are not retiring from our life that the last thing you want to do. You don't want to do it. If life retirement comes by itself, that's a different story, but you're not preparing for that one. You want to enjoy your life. You want to enjoy what you do and you want to contribute something to the community. And this is a quick synopsis of how it can be done, but there are many other ways. I would like to see your comments below as uh, what other options that you have tried and that has been successful. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I'm still a part-time cardiologist uh, working here in the Houston area. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much.